This is Daryl with Cisco Hands-On Training, Episode 20. Today we're going to talk about using distribute lists within an OSPF area. It's the 6th of October 2007, uh, and my feed remains on SwitchPod, my website remains at www.darylroot.com, and I'd appreciate your support by linking to my website. Uh, that way, that will help other people find these videos. Now we have a pretty good library of OSPF videos, and it's actually uh, getting pretty useful even for uh, uh, network, network administrators with uh, significant experience. Let's get into it. Here's our map for today. Uh, we have a different, well, we have a different map for today. We're dealing, everything is back in OSPF area zero and we don't have any uh, RIP environment at all anymore. So we're all just one o OSPF area. Let's review the config. So this is the config of one of my three routers in the area. And let me try that again. I must. So I have uh, actually four IP, uh, four interfaces with IP addresses, but the Ethernet zero is down. I should shut that down. And my OSPF one configuration is simple. It logs adjacency changes. That's enabled by default on this version of iOS. And uh, maybe I should configure that on the bottom router. And then network zero 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 zero. Don't care bits of two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five area zero. So I'm turning on. OSPF on all interfaces, any interface with an IP address is automatically put in area zero. And that's it. Conf T, let's fix that Ethernet interface, MTHTH zero. No IP address, shut down. And we're done with that. And of course, you always want to do a write mem to save your config. Otherwise, the next time you have a power outage, you'll come up with an old config and you'll take an outage. And yes, I regret to admit that's happened to me. So always write now. Okay, so let's let's see. I'm doing my right now. It's nice and slow. Let's go ahead and uh, um, here's the environment. Let's trace route to this uh, loop back over here. Once I do do that, sixteen dot five dot one. So I'll execute the command trace one seventy two at sixteen dot five dot one. And now what the routers, you see it's tra it says tracing type escape sequence to abort. And then it says tracing the route to, and then it just hangs. And what it's doing here is it's trying to do a DNS lookup. But we've never configured DNS in this environment. We don't have a DNS server to even talk to. So this can be very annoying because the trace routes are sitting here. It got the resp Now it's gotten the response from hop one. It's trying to do a reverse DNS lookup on that hop. And it's failing as well. So I need to type, I should type the escape sequence to make this stop. I'll hit control, shift, holding those down. Well, okay, it's done. Let me do it again. The escape sequence, what you should know, you hold down the control key and the shift key. You hit six, and then you release and hit X. And you can see it exited immediately faster that time. Now to get it to stop trying to do DNS lookups, I go into conf t no IP domain dash lookup. And then I will I can use my up arrow a couple times to get back to the trace command, trace 172.16.5.1, and I do the trace, and you can see it doesn't try to do the domain lookup and it finishes a lot faster. Now one other thing about the trace route, that other router is only one hop away. And so it got the response. It actually executed the trace three times. The first time it got a response of in 20 milliseconds. The second time it did not get a response at all and it hit an asterisk and, and it resulted in an asterisk. And then the third time it got the response in 16 milliseconds. Um, I, that's a typical response from a Cisco router and I believe the reason for the asterisk the second time around is that uh, the routers are smart enough that when they receive, uh, um, you know, they receive multiple trace routes in such a short time, it just ignores the second one because the router's real job is to forward packets, not respond to trace routes. Uh, okay, so now 
I want to do a distribute list and in order to facilitate the test of the distribute list what I want to do is I want to increase the cost the OSPF cost of this link so that way when I do the trace route it goes through the middle router to get to the bottom router so let's look at the uh, show IP let's see what the cost is on my serials one interface so show IP OSPF int serial uh, serial one and you can see the cost is 64 and that's the default configuration so I'm assuming the other way I have a combined cost of 128 whereas through the serial one interface I have a cost of 64 so let me increase the cost so quantity int serial one IP OSPF cost let's call it 200 And let's execute the trace route to the 5.1 IP address again. And now you can see that it took two hops to get to that IP address. The first hop was 2.2, .2, which is the serial one interface. And then the second hop is the response from the bottom router, which is the 4.2, which is the router with the loopback address. So that's a successful completion of the trace route. And now if I do the show IP route, show IP route 172.16.5.1, you can see my route metric is 129, which is 64 plus 64 plus 1 for the total cost of 129. And I'm going out via the serial to zero interface. So by adjusting the cost, I have successfully rerouted the traffic. Now we want to test distribute lists here. What we've done is we've what we've done is we've made it so that uh, if we're tracing from the top router to the bottom router, we go via the middle router. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to the middle router and I want to apply a distribute list inbound on the serial zero interface, so that way the um, so that way the traffic, that way it does not accept the 172.16.5.1 slash 24 or actually slash 32 because this is OSPF uh, route from the bottom router. So let's go to the middle router and here I am on the middle router. I just did a show IP route and you can see I have an OSPF route of 172.16.5.1 slash 32. And if I do a show IP OSPF database, I have three router LSAs for my three routers in area zero. And let's look at the one for 5.1. Show IP OSPF database um, router 172.16.5.1. And it says I am connected to the stub network 172.16.5.1 network mask 32. In the inside the router LSA, which is what I'd expect, or rather that that's what the bottom router is connected to. Okay, so in order to do the distribute list, the first thing I need is an access list. So I'm going to create a standard access list. T I P access dash access dash list one, and then deny one seventy two dot sixteen dot five dot one. Oh, I'm sorry. Access dash list one deny one seven deny one seventy two dot sixteen dot five dot one and I don't want any wildcard bits here, so I'm gonna go wildcard bit zero 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 zero. And then I'm going to do I need to permit all the other routes. So I'll do access dash list one deny or permit any. Show access dash list one. And you can see I'm going to dot, deny the 5.1 and then permit any. Now let's apply the distribute list to the interface. Um, conf t router OSPF one distribute dash lists one in serial zero. Let's see if that had any effect on our route table.
and you can see the route 5.1 is no longer in the route table. And it's not in there at all. So if I trace 172.16.5.1, oh, I need to do the no IP domain lookup here. So let me do control shift 6x off t no IP domain dash lookup show IP route trace 172.16.5.1 and it's just not working but now it's not working because it can't talk to 5.1 at all even if I do ping 172.16.5.1 it can't get there and this is disturbing this is not what one would expect applying a distribute list you'd expect to deny that route inbound on the serials inner interface but you're st it's still possible to get to the 5.1 via another path so you'd think that for the 5.1 we'd have a route via another path to get to the to go via the top router to get to the bottom router but we're not let's uh let's do a right mem and let's do a clear ip route and see if we see if that changes things gotta wait for the right mem to complete Gotta love these old slow routers. Show IP route. 5.1 is still not there. Clear IP route. Star. Show IP route. No. Let's uh, clear and restart our OSPF, OSPF instance. Clear IP OSPF 1. Clear IP OSPF one process. Reset OSPF process. Yeah, I'll reset the OSPF process. So that resets all the neighbors. It completely recalculates the routes, all starting from the beginning. My neighbors are now up. And I'm not getting the route. So this is not good behavior. In RIP, if I blocked this route inbound, then eventually I would send that I'm not able to reach the route. I mean, eventually the top router would realize that it's not able to receive the route via me because I'd stop advertising that route to the top router. And then the top router would get to the bottom router via its direct link. And then I'd try to get to the, uh, and then it would advertise that route to me. And then I, the middle router would get to 172.16.5.1 via the top router. So I'd reroute. But here I'm not rerouting at all. I'm just black hole in the traffic. Now let's go take a look at what the top router thinks of this, inst uh, of this situation. Okay, let's look at the top router. Show IP route. This is interesting. The top router still thinks that you can get to 172.16.5.1/32 via the middle router at the same cost of 129. So even though I blocked the route on the middle router, the top router is still trying to get to the route via the middle router. And if I do a trace route, If I do a trace route, I go to the wrong router, and then the router just uh, comes back with a exclamation mark H, which means host unreachable. Middle router can't get there, so it's sending back an ICMP error message saying, hey, I can't even get there. So what's going on? Let's look at our OSPF database. I still have the same three router LSAs. And let's look at the router LSA for the middle router because the, uh, the middle router has the the middle router has the distribute list show IP OSPF 
database 172.16. Or router 172.16.3.1. And you know it it it's not telling me anywhere that it has a distribute list of any kind. Let's go ahead and go back to the middle router. Here we are in the middle router. Show IP OSPF database router 172.16.5.1. And you know, it, it still has the same LSA from the bottom router. And the bottom router still says it's connected 172.16.5.1. Wait a minute. I applied a distribute list. Didn't I block the route advertisement with 172.16.5.1 coming into my router? Well, the answer is not. OSPF does not work that way. In an OSPF area, every router needs to have exactly the same routing information. Every router has all of the LSAs from all of the routers in the area, and that way every router can independently make the same routing decision. What effect did applying the distribute list have? The only effect it had was it made it so that you do not enter that route entry into your route table. So applying a OSPF distribute list does not stop, a gate, stop the propagation of routes via LSAs. You still receive the LSAs and flood the LSAs. The only thing it does is prevent you from installing the resulting route in the route table. And that's why when I applied the distribute list in an attempt to reroute traffic just to that one prefix, instead I'm black holing traffic to the prefix. Distribute lists should not be applied inside an area in OSPF because it goes against the fundamental way that OSPF works, which is every router in the OSPF area has the same routing information. So, so run begin router OSPF. So this configuration in OSPF where we apply a distribute list in a particular interface is what I would call an incorrect configuration. You don't want to use distribute lists on interfaces in OSPF within an area. Sadly, I have to say I have seen configurations like this in production and it's just gone on to cause problems. And I've seen that in large money-making networks and uh, it's, it's, it's just ugly. Don't even go there. This is, this is fundamentally wrong. RIP it works fine in RIP, but RIP is a distance vector protocol and is fundamentally different from a, uh, um, a, uh, uh, a link state protocol. Okay, that's it for today. Again, I suggest and recommend and would thank you if you link to, um, link to www.darylroot.com and that way it will help guide other people to the website where they can see these videos that I hope are useful.